Hello, and welcome to Midday Connection, Midweek Connection, I guess, yeah. on December 21st. It's the winter solstice day. We're here at First Presbyterian Church of San Angelo. My name is Pastor Joel. And I'm Pastor Natalie. And we are going to be reading our daily lectionary text for today and talking about it and seeing uh, what the Lord might have for us today. Obviously, as you can tell, you're watching, we're in our sanctuary here at the church and everything is all nice and decorated. We've got Christmas Eve coming up on Saturday. Christmas Day on Sunday, we will actually be having a worship service here on that morning. And I've been told to remind if the kids come in age appropriate uh, pajamas, pajamas, that would be great. <laughs> you know, even adults if they so desire. But we're just going to have a time of lessons and carols on actually both, uh, both days. But uh, at 1030 on Sunday morning. 1030 on Sunday morning. That's correct. So, um, yeah, I guess and that's about it. Christmas Eve is five. Christmas Eve at 5 o'clock. Jingle and Mingle starts at 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock. On Christmas Eve. Great. We're working I'm, backwards. <laughs> I'm glad that Natalie has everything in hand. So um, I guess then, without further ado, let me open us in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, the many blessings that you have provided for us. We thank you for your word to us. We thank you for a beautiful sanctuary in which we can read your word and we can reflect upon it. Uh, but Lord, even in the midst of places that are not quite as beautiful, uh, we know that you are present as well. And so when you meet us in dark places, Lord, we are grateful for that. But Lord, on this, on this special day, as we approach a very special uh, season, I ask that you would bless this time, the reading and the hearing of your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Today, we're going to start with Psalm 50. The Mighty One. God, the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes and does not keep silence. Before him is a devouring fire and a mighty tempest all around him. He calls to the heavens above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Gather to me my faithful ones who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens declare his righteousness, for God himself is judge. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, I will testify against you. I am God, your God. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you. Your burnt offerings are continually before me. I will not accept a bull from your house or goats from your folds. For every wild animal of the forest is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills, I know all the birds of the air, and all that moves in the field is mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world and all that is in it is mine. I do not eat the flesh of bulls or drink the bloat of goats. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and pay your vows to the Most High. Call on me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me." But to the wicked, God says, What right have you to recite my statutes or take my covenant on your lips? For you hate discipline, and you cast my words behind you. You make friends with a thief when you see one, and you keep company with adulterers. You give your mouth free rein for evil, and your tongue frames deceit. You sit and speak against your kin. You slander your own mother's child. These things you have done, and I have been silent. You thought that I was just like yourself, but now I rebuke you and lay the charge before you. Mark this then, you who forget God, or I will tear you apart, and there will be none to deliver. Those who bring thanksgiving as their sacrifice honor me. To those who go the right way, I will show the salvation of God. Psalm 147, verses 1 through 11. Praise the Lord, how good it is to sing praises to our God, for he is gracious and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem, he gathers the outcasts of Israel, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars, he gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden, he casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving, make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the animals their food and to the young ravens when they cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the speed of the runner. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him 
and those who hope in his steadfast love. Our prophetic word today comes from Isaiah chapter 29, verses 9 through 24. Stupefy yourselves and be in a stupor. Bind, blind yourselves and be blind. Be drunk, but not from wine. Stagger, but not from strong drink. For the Lord has poured out upon you a spirit of deep sleep. He has closed your eyes, you prophets, and covered your heads, you seers. The vision of all this has become for you like the words of a sealed document. If it is given to those who can read with the command, read this, they say, we cannot, for it is sealed. And if it is given to those who cannot read, saying, read this, they say, we cannot read. The Lord said, because these people draw near me with their mouths and honor me with their lips while their hearts are far from me and their worship of me is a human commandment learned by rote, so I will again do amazing things with this people, shocking and amazing. The wisdom of their wise shall perish and the discernment of the discerning shall be hidden. Ha! You who hide a plan too deep for the Lord, whose deeds are in the dark, and who say, who sees us? Who knows us? You turn things upside down. Shall the potter be regarded as the clay? Shall the thing made say of its maker, he did not make me? Or the thing formed say to the one who formed it, he has no understanding? Shall not Lebanon in a very little while become a fruitful field, and the fruitful field be regarded as a forest? On that day the deaf shall hear the words of a scroll, and out of their gloom and darkness the eyes of the blind shall see. The meek shall obtain fresh joy in the Lord, and the neediest people shall exult in the Holy One of Israel. For the tyrant shall be no more, and the scoffer shall cease to be. All those alert to do evil shall be cut off. Those who cause a person to lose a lawsuit, who set a trap for the arbiter in the gate, and without grounds deny justice to the one in the right. Therefore, thus says the Lord, who redeemed Abraham concerning the house of Jacob, No longer shall Jacob be ashamed, no longer shall his face grow pale, for when he sees his children, the work of my hands in his midst, they will sanctify my name, they will sanctify the Holy One of Jacob, and will stand in awe of the God of Israel, and those who err in spirit will come to understanding, and those who grumble will accept instruction. From Revelation chapter 21, verses 9 through 21. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues came and said to me, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And in the spirit he carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. It has the glory of God and a radiance like a very rare jewel, like jasper, Clear as crystal, it has a great high wall with twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and on the gates are inscribed the names of the twelve tribes of the Israelites, on the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. And the wall of the city has twelve foundations, and on them are the twelve names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. The angel who talked to me had a measuring rod of gold to measure the city and its gates and walls. The city lies four square its length, the same as its width, and he measured the city with his rod, 1,500 miles. Its length and width and height are equal. He also measured its wall, 144 cubits, by human measurement, which the angel was using. The wall is built of jasper, while the city is pure gold, clear as glass. The foundations of the wall of the city are adorned with every jewel. The first was jasper, the second sapphire, the third agate, the fourth emerald, the fifth onyx, the sixth cornelian, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth chrysoprase, the eleventh jacinth, and the twelfth amethyst. And the twelve gates are twelve pearls. Each of the gates is a single pearl, and the street of the city is pure gold, transparent as glass. And our gospel today is from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to 
to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord with God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy, and he will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. And back to our psalm, Psalm 53. Fools say in their hearts, there is no God. They are corrupt. They commit abominable acts. There is no one who does good. God looks down from heaven on humankind to see if there are any who are wise, who seek after God. They have all fallen away. They are all alike perverse. There is no one who does good. No, not one. Have they no knowledge, those evildoers who eat up my people as they eat bread and do not call upon God? There they shall be in great terror, in terror such as has not been, for God will scatter the bones of the ungodly. They will be put to shame, for God has rejected them. Oh, that deliverance for Israel would come from Zion. When God restores the fortunes of his people, Jacob will rejoice. Israel will be glad. And our final psalm today is from Psalm 17. Hear a just cause, O Lord. Attend to my cry. Give ear to my prayer from lips free of deceit. From you let my vindication come. Let your eyes see the right. If you try my heart, if you visit me by night, if you test me, you will find no wickedness in me. My mouth does not transgress. As for what others do, by the word of your lips, I have avoided the ways of the violent. My steps have held fast to your paths. My feet have not slipped. I call upon you, for you will answer me, O God. Incline your ear to me. Hear my words. Wondrously show your steadfast love, O Savior of those who seek refuge from their adversaries at your right hand. Guard me as the apple of the eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings from the wicked who despoil me, my deadly enemies who surround me. They close their hearts to pity. With their mouths they speak arrogantly. They track me down. Now they surround me. They set their eyes to cast me to the ground. They are like a lion eager to tear, like a young lion lurking in ambush. Rise up, O Lord, confront them, overthrow them. By your sword deliver my life from the wicked. From mortals, by your hand, O Lord, from mortals whose portion in life is in this world. May their bellies be filled with what you have stored up for them. May their children have more than enough. May they leave something over to their little ones. As for me, I shall behold your face in righteousness. When I awake, I will be satisfied, beholding your likeness. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hmm. So, I like that Christmas is coming up. We've got right. just, what, four days left? Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, right? right. Four days, four days for Christmas. And uh, the discipline of doing daily lectionary readings and getting texts that are familiar, texts that we have done many times with you, uh, combined with some new ones, or ones at least that we haven't done probably in this context yet. Um, it, it just makes me think, uh, I just started reading a book today called uh, A Long Obedience in the Same Direction by Eugene Peterson. And uh, he is talking about how the Christian life of faith is not 
a, a new thing or a, a fashionable thing or something that uh, is always being, um, you know, coming up the next and the biggest and the brightest. Right. It's, it's ongoing, consistent life right. of discipleship, mm -hmm. uh, prayer, scripture, um, acts of service. And in the midst of that, some of the struggles that we as Christians experience mm -hmm. as we try to follow Jesus more closely, as we come into tension with the world and those things, um, those tensions still exist. It's right. not as if a life of faith has removed all burdens from us. Um, and so uh, doing these readings today, and I know we've done 147 went through 11 every wednesday right. or almost have, every wednesday well i'm thinking maybe i should have but we should all have it memorized right we've done it so many times but every time just reading it anew and afresh again and being reminded like why why do you think your strength is in the horse or the you know the speed right. of the runner all those right. kind of things those are gifts given right and so they don't impress him they, yeah they don't impress god uh, <laughs> that you know back to the psalm 50 do i drink the uh, blood of goats yes. or eat the flesh of bulls, all these things. Um, and, and so again, I think about this from a Christmas, a Christmas perspective and how we can get really excited about a day or a season, mm -hmm. but are we truly living lives of faith as God would have for us? Are we truly looking forward to that new Jerusalem that right. will one day be revealed? Are we reflecting upon uh, the Psalms that call out poor behavior. Are we reflecting upon the promises, even in Isaiah, of restoration of the uh, of the righteous uh, and judgment against right. the wicked on an ongoing, regular basis? Or is it something that we just hit at on special seasons? Right. Well, and I think, and when you look at, you know, you look at the high points in the church year, and you've got the Christmas, and you've got the Easter, and you have all of those things. And those times, and we hit, the, you know, it's a cycle. Mm -hmm. And so every year we do this. And on one hand, um, I think that it is important that we, we don't get, eh, it's just Christmas, eh, it's just Easter. Right. That we want that newness. We want that excitement about the season. But I know that you've said it in sermons, and I know we have spoken about it. But are we living lives reflective of just exactly um the magnitude of what is being done in these seasons. Christ, the baby, was born a savior. Mm -hmm. um, his birth, it changed the world. Right. You know, his resurrection, it changed the world. So do we take those events in the church year and take those events that we are celebrating in our own lives and are our, are our lives transformed by that? Are we impacted by that? Or is it just another day? Mm. And we have the celebration and we have all of these beautiful things. Oh, we just take them down and we just go back to the same old, same old. <laughs> are we truly, I don't know if we can ever truly grasp the magnitude of what he has done right. for us, but are we celebrating in the magnitude of the sacrifice that Christ um, has offered to us and the mm. salvation that he has offered to us? Mm. Um, does that continue beyond um, the season of Advent and Christmas and, you know, the ordinary times? The ordinary times. Are we times. still right. celebrating um, the, the gift that Christ has given? Right. So, like, even going to the Luke passage and, mm -hmm. and obviously super familiar, uh, the birth of Jesus being mm -hmm. told, uh, foretold there in Luke chapter 1, that... They're a little town in Galilee called Nazareth. Mm -hmm. uh, not probably the most impressive town. I'm, I'm sure, you know, I've never been there, but, you know, right. I'm sure that it's got its natural beauty, just like kind of any other place in the world. Uh, but a small town, small place. And there is a young woman, a virgin engaged to a man named Joseph. Um, and, and an angel of the Lord shows up and gives this news about how she's favored, don't be afraid, that you are going to conceive a child of the Holy Spirit that um, call the Son of God, name him Jesus, name him, you know, Joshua, basically, Yeshua, the, the one who saves. Mm -hmm. um, and nothing will be impossible because he reminds, you know, well, he tells her, informs her that her cousin Mary, who had been barren for all these years, is, is, has herself become, become pregnant. pregnant. Um, 
And I think sometimes these can become so familiar, like you were saying, right. that we forget the majesty and the magnitude. And so Mary's response, well, here am I, the servant of the Lord, let it be according to me. Are we, are we awaiting something so monumental of an announcement like Mary, and then maybe we'd say something? Or are we actually, have we received that monumental call already right. that Jesus loves us? and that Jesus died for us, and Jesus has forgiven us, and we are called to live transformed lives. Right. Do we need the angel of the Lord to show up in some sort of miraculous, spectacular way, or in the, um, the ordinary way, which is still a spectacular way, right. in I which mean, God ministers to us? I'm sure this wasn't some special day, and right. all of a sudden this angel appears to her. She's just going about her daily life. And how many times in our daily lives are we confronted mm. with God? Are we confronted with people that we have opportunities to mm. to speak or to share with and that it's just an ordinary day mm. and we don't take those opportunities? Um, you know, she, obviously an angel, God is standing in front of her. That's That's pretty, you know. It's impressive. That's impressive. <laughs> it but causes yet, maybe some fear. Do not be afraid, Mary. Right, do right? not be afraid. But in that moment, I mean, like, can't we all hope that that would be our response? Mm. You know, here I am, whatever you are calling me to do. So maybe the angel is not standing in front of us, but there are things and there are people put into our lives that we do have opportunities to say, got it. Mm. And this is mm. what I can do in service. And, um, and I think we miss that if we aren't looking for that. Right. Because it's not an angel glowing and standing in front of us. All right. But I still think that there are things that are presented and given to us and that we have opportunities. And I think that we probably miss them a lot of the time oh, because we're we not do. looking because it is just the, the ordinary everyday or the right. non-spectacular, um, you know. So. In, the, in the going through one's ordinary life as faithfully as one can do that, mm -hmm. then the Lord does reveal to us those things that we should be doing in specific circumstances. Right. Um, I think yeah, that's exactly right. Are we keeping our eyes open to to see and keep our ears open to hear? You know, the Psalms are always talking about those things, right? It's just yes. like, wait, I'm going to, uh, like in the Isaiah passage, well, if even you do the scroll and you're like, well, I can't read it because it's sealed. And it's right. just like, well, these people can't read. Well, we can't do it because we can't read. And it's just like, okay, let me tell you plainly what's going to happen. <laughs> right. It's just quit giving me the excuses on what you can and cannot do. Here it is. Here it is. And nothing will be impossible with and that. <laughs> he will make it what? all possible. Sometimes, sometimes I think that some of these people are just impossible, and it right. drives me nuts. It drives right. me crazy. So, uh, you know, on that day the deaf shall hear, and the words of the scroll, and out of the gloom and darkness the eyes of the blind shall see. And it's just like, well, God has the capacity to do the impossible. Right. And, and in our lives, I think if we think about the impossibility of things that we face regularly, as in, I can't make myself the most righteous of people. You know, I have to trust that God is working in me. Um, right. uh, I can't stop the, you know, proverbial enemies from doing their stuff to me. I can only respond uh, appropriately, graciously, compassionately, right. patiently, um, waiting for God to do that work in their hearts, waiting for God to do the work in my own heart right. like, all the time. Um, but God will do the impossible. And, and so I just think there's that huge contrast then between just the simple, although spectacular, but simple place in which the encounter with Mary and, and the angel right. took place. And then the description that we have in Revelation 21 of this new Jerusalem, this vision of the new Jerusalem, um, you know, no longer a backwater town in Galilee, but now a, a city made of pure gold that's 1,500 miles in every direction. Well, not the humble, not the humble um, town of Nazareth, not the humble stable, the humble manger. The majesty mm. and the glory of Christ is fully revealed. Right. Um, the power of God is revealed. Um, and I mean, it's on full display. It's on full display. And we're not quite there yet. Right. 
<laughs> right. Yeah. And one day, right? One day. And one day it will come. Um, hmm. And so I, th- I really like what you said earlier about how uh, the, the rhythms of our calendar and the ordinary days and then the uh, feast and extraordinary days, uh, you know, difference between when they have white or purple uh, or red in our sanctuary as opposed mm-hmm. to green in terms right. of uh, uh, the growth occurs during mm-hmm. the ordinary times. It's those extraordinary times that are supposed to kick us into gear, get us right. moving in the right direction, and then the obedience occurs over those length of days. Right. Um, and so as we are awaiting uh, the fulfillment of Revelation 21 and the new Jerusalem coming down and all of these things being finally revealed and all of their fullness and glory, we can reflect upon the little tastes and touches that we have received because Christmas is a glorious season. It right. just is. And I think that's a, one of the reasons why we do decorate and why we do have these um, celebrations. It's, it, right. it, it is a taste of that which is to come. Right. Um, and uh, a, a looking forward to um, of, of God bringing everything to right. Right. Yeah. Hmm. Again, Revelation twenty-one, not, not your typical Christmas passage. I know. But, I was reading that, going, huh, huh? Where are we going to go with this? Well, you know, again, we've got some but, cool, cool decorations, but we don't have I, streets of gold and right. foundations of the wall adorned with every precious right. stone and things. It's like this is no good. No pearls hanging out on the. This is this is the, good. Yes, <laughs> but it's but not. It's not, it's not this. this. Right. Um, yeah. So. Even even in the midst of the celebration, it's not the final fulfillment, right. but it's a it's a foretaste, a looking forward to uh, that which God will do. Hmm. Anything else? I think that's good. It's an exciting time now. It is. It is. It's yeah. A, it's a yeah. It's exciting. It is. Well, why don't you close us in prayer then? I'd be happy to. Great. Gracious Lord. Thank you for this time together, um, and thank you for um, the opportunity to read your word and to share your word, and I just pray that in this um, excitement of the Christmas season, that um, that it, it seems so easy to see you in these moments, that beyond the Christmas season, that we continue to look for you and look for the ways that you call us. Um, into uh, service of others. Look for ways and opportunities to share the good news of your son. Um, And may we um, look forward to experiencing your full glory and your full majesty. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, everybody. Um, I don't know if we're going to have a chance to do this next week. It's just kind of the week after Christmas, and we'll see what happens. But nonetheless, we're looking forward to continuing opportunities to do Midweek Connections in 2023. And if you do have any questions or comments, please do call the church, and we'd be happy to listen to you and uh, share prayer concerns and uh, certainly bring those before the Lord. So again, uh, 4 o'clock. Jingle and mingle. Jingle and mingle five Saturday. O'clock on Saturday. Five o'clock. Five o'clock here in the sanctuary for our Christmas Eve service and ten thirty on Sunday morning. Hope to see you. Hope to see you. Take care. Bye bye.